Namaste, my friends. My name is Daryl. Welcome to Safe Living. In this episode, we're going to be covering grab bars. Uh, there's going to be a big series on this, so there's a lot to cover. So let's get going. So let's go over the agenda. The agenda is we're going to cover a lot of government false statistics or just some just to give you an overview. Uh, we're going to get into why do we need grab bars, types of grab bars, where do we mount grab bars, how do we mount them safely, failure points within the grab bar mounting, ADA specifications for grab bars, an ASTM test method that I'm going to cover that I used for my testing, um, my test setup anchors that we are going to be testing in grab bars. So if you see up here in this right hand corner, I did an episode before about government statistics and trends. And if you click on this QR code here, it'll take you to that. If we look at the government statistics, in 2018, there were an estimated 36 million falls uh, and 18, 8 million injuries. And the CDC projects that that's going to increase to 52 million falls or 12 million injuries. And this QR code here will take you directly to that study. Another important point to note is if we look at the 10 top causes among, of death amongst older adults, um, number seven is unintentional injuries. Out of the unintentional, in, unintentional injuries, falls are the number one leading of death in that category. So in 2011, the CDC decided to do a study on nine fatal bathroom injuries amongst people over the age of 15. And one of the things that they did is they used the data set from 2008. Realize these studies are not done very often where they actually go in and analyze the data further. So one thing that's important in 2008 21.8 million people had falls. So if you look at the population in New York state uh, projected for 2022, that's 19 million plus. So there are more people, 21.8 million falls back in 2008. That's more than the population of, of New York. Out of that, that was for, that, that group was age 15 and older. These are non-fatal injuries. And the CDC estimated that it was $67 billion in lifetime care just to take care of those 20 million, um, 21 million falls. So as I said, the 2011 analysis came from a data set and out of this 21 million. And what they did is they analyzed over 3,000 cases out of 62 hospital emergency rooms and what they found is in this study, there was limited data, but bathrooms are commonly believed to be a very hazardous area within your home. And one of the things that they did estimate out of that study was there was 234,000 non-fatal bathroom injuries in 2008. So why do we need grab bars? So a grab bar, again, is a very important safety feature, which really provides support and stability for us when we're in hazardous areas. Um, and these areas are like showers, bathrooms, toilets, where the areas are typically uh, tile, slippery, moist, wet, and we just need them for stability to help prevent falls um, and slips, which typically result in serious injuries like broken bones, broken hips, head trauma, etc. So grab bars are designed to withstand certain amounts of force and they can really be installed in a variety of configuration and lengths to suit really any need of any user. Um, but one of the things that I recommend is that you really go out and work with an occupational therapist or um, your doctors or your teams to really determine the best way to mount, um, where to mount these. We'll get into how to mount them. Types of grab bars, uh, this QR code will just take you to this straight uh, grab bar. And we're gonna do tests on this, but this is just a straight Amazon um, basic grab bar uh, that they sell. This is a grab bar that's straight with a towel rack. Uh, this is an angled grab bar. These are fold down grab bars that typically put next to toilets. Uh, so when people get up and down from the toilet 
uh, but you'll see this more in uh, commercial, hotel, um, hospital type environments. Then we have uh, multifunctional grab bars. Uh, this is a toilet paper holder. I have this one in my house. This is the fav my favorite toilet paper holder of all. This little lever here comes up and down, and this is able to support um, well over 250 pounds of pressure uh, being able to get up and down. And then this one here is a soap dish. This is a Moen, um, but you have a, a, you know, a dish or a shelf in here where you can put shampoos and things like that, and it's still in your shower. So that's a multifunction use. Uh, uh, grab bar. Then we have floor to ceiling grab bars uh, where you want to be able to do a transfer in and out and this actual bar here swivels around uh, as you get in and out and again it could be used getting off of the toilet and then into a shower. Then the last thing we're going to talk about is suction cups and um, grab bars and I'm going to tell you why you should never use them after this presentation and you'll see it as we get into the demonstrations. Where do we mount grab bars? So grab bars are typically mounted on tile surface walls. Um, they're mounted on residential. In residential it's half inch sheetrock so this is actually a grab bar in my bathroom, uh, the multifunction bar. And this is mounted before you go into the tub but I also like it the fact that I can still put my towel on there, realizing you never want to be able, you never want to pull on this bar because it's not going to support the weight, but this grab bar will. And then the other areas that we're going to talk about is fiberglass tubs and showers. How do you mount them in there? The next thing is, is how do we mount them safely? And there's really a couple ways to look at this. So number one, when we're retrofitting our existing home, uh, most of the time we don't have the ability to look behind the wall. So we're really looking for a stud or whatever. But during remodeling or new construction, there are a lot of things that you can do to put in wall reinforcements like wood blocking or entirely cover this back wall with plywood, half inch plywood, and then put your cement board over top and then you've got that surface. In a lot of cases, you're gonna be able to um, not determine so in plus a tile over the top, there's really no reliable stud finders that are gonna find exactly where these are at. So in a lot of cases, mounting to the stud is optional. And then the other issue is your grab bar might be short or too long and not be able to go stud to stud. So in a lot of cases, you're gonna to need to connect to a stud and an anchor or strictly use anchors or use only wood blocking, which we'll get into later on to mount your grab bar. The thing that I wanna talk about is failure points in grab bar mounting. Um, and here, our grab bar failure points, number one, could be the wall flange on the bar. So again, this is an Amazon basic grab bar that is made by them. And it's a really good grab bar. And here we have a weld with this flange to this pipe. Your mounting screws here could also be a failure point or the wall anchors could be a failure point. And if we look at behind the wall, this is one of the anchors that that was actually mounted to. So if your anchor can't support the weight and pull through this wall, then that's another failure point. And then wall reinforcements, you know, this is a two by six here if you mount it into there. Um, is it the screws? you know, the mounting screws, are they gonna withstand it? And then the sheetrock itself, will the sheetrock withstand and withhold the weight requirements? So there's quite a few failure points that we're gonna talk about all this as we go through. The next thing I wanted to talk about is the ADA, American Disabilities Act. Um, there's guidelines out there. And if you click, if you take a picture of this QR code, it's a PDF, and you go to section 609 of this PDF, it will actually highlight uh, the requirements in commercial buildings, federal buildings um, for ADA requirements. ADA is not a requirement within residential at this point, but you have to check your local building and code enforcement to determine that. So let's talk about a couple of the ADA specifications. So 609 in that book is the grab bar section. And there's only really two things that I really wanna cover in this section here. 
And number one in this area here, 609.2.1, the circular circumference of the grab bar should be a minimum of one and one quarter inches or 32 millimeters in diameter and a maximum of two inches in diameter or 51 millimeters in diameter. If you have a non-circular cross-section, um, let's say it's an oval, then you're, you're, you should have no more than two inches maximum perimeter and four inches entire diameter. The other part that I wanted to highlight in the ADA specification is 609.8, which is structural strength. Here, what they're saying is that a grab bar should withhold 250 pounds of horizontal or vertical force or 11, 1,102 Newtons um, applied at any point on the grab bar and the fastener, the Walmart mounting device or the wall structure should be able to hold that 250 pounds. The next thing that I wanted to talk about is the ASTM, the American Standard Testing Methods, put out a standard consumer safety specification for grab bars, accessories, and installed in bathroom areas. This is the QR code that will take you to that specification. And here there are three areas that I really wanna highlight that because we're gonna go over how we tested these fasteners and grab bars. But when you're mounting a grab bar, they're saying you mount it to the manufacturer specification and one of the things that we're doing is we're gonna gradually apply up to 250 foot pound or pounds of force or 1.1100 uh, Newtons of downward pressure on the grab bar. And this needs to happen over a 30 minute period. You can load the weight up to 30 minutes to 250 pounds. And then once you get to the 250 pounds, it has to hold that weight for that period of time. So how are you able to really determine that? And during my testing that I'm gonna be discussing is I'm using this Amata Digital Force Gauge. It's a push-pull meter. And this allows me to measure push or pull force up to 1,100 pounds of force. So what my test setup is, is really I have my Amata gauge. I have a, a, a scissor jack that you use in a car and this is bolted to a four by four on the bottom. I have standard two by four um, wall construction with half inch sheetrock at 24 by 36 inch panels. We're also gonna use this to test um, once we glue on tile, how the impact of tile does it. And then we're also gonna be testing, reinforcing with blocking and plywood and things like that. The anchors that we're gonna be testing in this here is, this is the Moen anchor system that goes into the wall and this QR code will actually take you to that. We're testing the Moen, we're gonna test the, the uh, Delta. And again, these go in here, these, these are aluminum um, plates and flanges that you can support or, and connect the grab bar to. Then we're gonna be testing wingets and there's two different configurations for wingets. And again, if you take a picture of the QR codes, the QR codes are gonna take you right to an Amazon page that is gonna give you some highlighted information on that. Okay, this is the wingets. Then we're gonna be uh, testing the toggler bolt here. And with this toggler, one thing I wanna really also highlight is, this is going in a bathroom area. You always wanna make sure that you're using rust resistant um, screws, machine screws. And in this case, you should be using stainless steel. Uh, and this is a quarter 20 thread that would go into here. So even if you buy these, you need to make sure that you're getting the proper um, bolt to go with it to make sure it doesn't rust. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to be testing on this configuration, the Amazon Basic Grab Bar. This is Amazon Basic is their brand. Um, we're testing 18 inch grab bars. Then the other grab bar that we're gonna be testing is the this two-pack shower grab bar that we got from Amazon. And I just wanna highlight a couple things with this. Um, as we said before, the ADA guideline says one and a quarter inch diameter uh, minimum requirement, and these do not meet that requirement at all, okay? And this is sold on Amazon. Um, 
And then the other thing too is, we already mentioned to you that you need a 250 pound um, hold strength on these grab bars. And all they provide you is whether you're mounting this on sheetrock or tile, and if you follow the manufacturer's specifications, um, it's very unlikely that these anchors are gonna hold this in. So when we go through this testing, we're gonna show that to you, but this is the QR code to this grab bar that I also purchased on Amazon, and I went through a lot of these um, and destroyed a lot of these as I was going through my testing. So we'll, we'll show all that to you in future videos. So in our future series on grab bars, we're gonna be using this test configuration to test the different anchors, different types of grab bars, different type of wall reinforcements. That includes plywood blocking, um, two by eight or two by 10 blocking in a wall. Uh, if you're doing new, new construction or remodeling a bathroom, um, then we're also going to be testing what it what impact it has when you put a, a ceramic tile on the wall versus just just the uh, sheetrock by itself. I'm not a certified lab at all. I just put this together uh, to try to duplicate what the ASTM test method is. If you have any questions, any comments, please list it in the comment section below and I will get back to you. Again, I'm not a certified lab, uh, but I just wanted to quantify some of this stuff for my own purposes as I do modifications for my family and my loved ones. Uh, I just wanna make sure I'm doing things the right way. So please uh, subscribe uh, and watch any future videos as uh, we come out. So looking forward to you on the next video. Take care.